We do want to remind our viewers that uh, Sally Heyman, the commissioner for Miami-Dade County's District 4, which represents Surfside, said that there were 51 people at this time unaccounted for, and we were told that there were 55 units as part of this collapse, so it's unclear whether some of those units were obviously not occupied at the mm -hmm. time, whether multiple people were in certain units. We, we simply do not know. Of course, we're going to keep gathering that information, and it's unclear whether that 51 number will continue to climb as more and more people start reaching out to that family reunification center and identifying people that they say they were in that building. We haven't been able to reach out for them, and they are added to that unaccounted for list. Yeah, we do want to check in with CBS 4's Austin Carter, who I'm told we are able to get mm -hmm. live despite the difficult weather conditions. Uh, Austin, you've been at a few scenes this morning. You were at JMH to begin with, and then you were on the beach where we got a clearer picture of a lot of that damage and destruction. And where are you at now? Yes, yeah, so we're actually on Collins right now, and if we can quickly pan over to show you the parade of uh, Miami-Dade uh, County Police vehicles that we've been seeing really stream in here just within the past several minutes. Uh, my photographer and I have really been noticing while we've been sitting in our car trying to uh, dodge some of the rain there, we just continue to see police officers flood this area and make their way into the crime scene, and we're not talking about, you know, one or two vehicles heading in, but multiple vehicles heading in just, you know, over the past 30 minutes here, so might need to gather some more information on what's going on there, but we are talking about three really big areas of concern out here where there's a lot of activity. Of course, where we are right now, this is on Collins Avenue in Surfside. We are just north of 84th Street, and this is right where the roadblock begins. If you look off into the distance, you can see some of those satellite trucks there. Those are from news crews, not only here from Miami and Fort Lauderdale, but really from across the state who have made their way down here uh, to cover this horrible tragedy. And this is also where further down um, is that high rise condo uh, complex as well as uh, investigators and uh, officials, people like that just really involved in this investigation and they have blocks and blocks and blocks of Collins Avenue roped off for this investigation. They are turning people around right here. The traffic lights are off and flashing. Uh, there are people on the ground directing drivers. They either need to turn around or make another way if they are trying to head north to, through Surfside. They are not going to be able to. So we have this going on here right now. This is in the area where Ted Scouten and Brooke Schaefer are as well. And then over at the reunification center, that's also um, a big area there where a lot of families are just desperately waiting for answers. Um, you know, the time ticking extremely slow for them, waiting on these answers. And of course, the rain. We've been talking about that for the past hour. A lot of our crews here have not been able to get out in the field either due to the conditions out here for our own safety. There's definitely been some lightning. The wind has picked up. Luckily, it's calmed down now. But that rain has really been a constant here for just over a past hour, and that cannot do anything to help crews try to locate anyone inside of all that debris. Uh, you know, we've watched these videos here, that especially that dramatic surveillance video showing that a high rise or a portion of it just toppling down. So you've got to imagine that crews still have a lot to look through and, you know, hopefully try to find anyone who is still alive or if there are any bodies under all of that rubble and debris. So uh, workers definitely have their work cut out for them, and this really is a multi-agency response. We were just hearing there on air from uh, Miami-Dade County Fire. We know that this has really been an, a team effort from, you know, crews just across Miami-Dade and out here in uh, Surfside to try and figure out exactly what happened out here. We also uh, understand that, you know, there are going to be these, you know, closures here probably in place for a little while as this investigation really just gets underway. And, of course, we will be here to bring you any of those updates, guys. Back to you in the studio. Austin, when we spoke with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue's Maggie Castro, she talked about the fact that now one of the big challenges for people who just live in that area is going to be that traffic along Collins Avenue. So really, if you have no need to be out in the road in that area, just completely avoid it now at this time. Austin, I just want to touch on where you said you are. You said you're on 84th and Collins. Is that where police and, and fire crews are keeping you all because of the uncertainty of the structural integrity of some of the buildings near this collapse site? Are they concerned at this point of the potential for further collapse? Exactly, and that's, you know, part of the efforts right now is to make sure that this, you know, the areas that are collapsed are still okay for uh, crews to go through and try to, you know, see if there is anyone, um, you know, under that debris or anything like that. And, of course, not only do they want to keep people back for their safety, but this has drawn a lot of attention, not only from media, but for folks who live in this area. Many of them made their way onto the beach to try to get a look at the debris and damage. Right now, obviously, because of the rain, we're not seeing too many people out here on the sidewalks, but we are seeing a 
a lot of that vehicle traffic trying to make their way around here. So police right now, they just want to make sure that crews have as no, enough space as they need to, you know, get through all of this and do the work they need to do. They also want to keep anyone away that does not need to be in the immediate area as they know this is certainly something uh, a drawing a local attention and also national attention as well. And Austin, before we let you go, I mean, just getting you live is a good sign that maybe that the rain is letting up, the weather conditions are becoming more favorable. Are you getting that sense uh, for the search and rescue crews that had to kind of put this effort on pause because of the weather? And that's really the hope here. And I got to tell you, when we were earlier on um, in the morning, right around 9 o'clock, we really started to see those dark clouds moving in from the south and the north and kind of really converging at the spot. Here we are here in Surfside. Uh, you know, the hope is right now, you know, maybe that rain held off just long enough for crews to do as much as they can. Hopefully, uh, they can resume those efforts here very shortly. Luckily, like I said earlier, the wind has really calmed down. Also, we're not seeing any lightning. There is still a trickling rain. So hopefully, these crews can get back to doing what they do best try to figure out exactly what happened here and see if there is anyone still under that rubble.